It's my nerd world and Depeche Mode, the podcast on the show this week. Do we have a Memento Mori release date? Possible date for the single to come out? Also, AI writes a story. We'll get into your listener feedback as well. If you want to support My Nerd World, head on over to MyNerdWorld.net and check out the science fiction space opera series Embark. More details on that at the end of today's episode. I have never had a snippet of new Depeche Mode music impact me the way that that snippet has from the upcoming release, Memento Mori. Welcome to Depeche Mode, the podcast here on My Nerd World. My name is John Justice, and I had an episode (laughs) recorded and ready to go before the end of the year over the holidays. I had themed it. I was going to talk about, and I did talk about, my favorite Depeche Mode songs that remind me of the holiday season, and wouldn't you know it, something happened with the audio, and it got, I'm like, half the podcast was gone. I have absolutely no idea what happened, and I had considered piecing it together and doing it again and it was you know heading into Christmas and and for for whatever reason I just decided well this episode didn't take I'm gonna go ahead and just (laughs) move on and we'll do another one at the beginning of the uh, of the new year so if you're curious by the way uh, as to what songs remind me of the holidays, uh, it really comes down to the um, the B sides off of Violator. At the time when those were released in September, um, specifically Happiest Girl and Sea of Sin, uh, dangerous to a lesser extent. Um, but the the World in My Eyes single that came out at the latter part of that year in the in in 1990 that included those two particular B-sides of Happiest Girl and Sea of Sin. Because of their release date falling uh, right around September, I always associate those songs with with the holidays. Uh, so I, I had gone on uh, in a lot more depth about, about that and talked about other bands that had albums released right around the same time in other years, like Trash Can Sinatras and... and uh, but again, something happened with the podcast, and and anyway, anyway. So here's a brand new year. Welcome to 2023, uh, Depeche Mode, the podcast. So excited for this next release uh, by the band, and I wanted to put out an episode today talking about the latest rumors. I've done my best to round up the in, the the most information that I could that I can find. We haven't received anything official uh, from the band uh, since we had the the press conference. Uh, in uh, in late last year. So I've done as much digging as I could to gather what little information is out there or being rumored to share with you on uh, on this week's episode. I want to go back to that snippet for Ghosts Again, which we're all kind of assuming is going to be the name of the song and potentially the first single. I imagine that's going to be the case, but it still remains to be seen. Simply because in the past, when Depeche Mode has put out new music before, it doesn't necessarily mean we're going to get the single. For example, with um, Delta Machine, we got the entire track Angel, but Heaven ended up being the the lead single off of that. So it remains to be seen if that ends up being the single uh, the single or not. But back to my initial statement on there, that, that song um, and just that little snippet has really just grabbed me. 
Um, I'm drawn to this album for a number of very personal reasons, and I'll talk a little bit about that towards the end of the uh, of the episode once we get past the the core topics that I want to uh, that I want to cover. But there's an emotional weight to that song that has really, really struck with uh, struck a chord with me. There are several remixes, as always happens when Depeche Mode releases snippets of their music prior to an album release, uh, and a lot of really good mixers and musicians have put together some fairly decent remixes of that song based off of that snippet. If you want to share those with me, what you think is the best, feel free to do so. You can email me, talkshownerd at gmail.com. Uh, if you follow me on uh, Twitter, at John J-O-N Justice, or more specifically, you can follow at the My Nerd World. You can send it to me there as well. I'm just curious which one is your favorite, and is there one in particular that you've been listening to over and over again? I tend to shy away from those remixes based off of small snippets of Depeche Mode songs simply because I don't want to get too I don't want to get too much of a memory burn of other music before the release comes out, and it not being the official. You know, a, 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 an official Depeche Mode remix. I kind of like to share to uh, to shy away from it. However, just because that snippet has struck such a chord with me, I would be very interested uh, to hear uh, which versions and remixes you may uh, be listening to. So again, drop me an email, talkshownerd at gmail dot com, or if you happen to be listening to this on YouTube, you can leave a comment in the comment section. Uh, a lot of different music publications have been putting out their most anticipated music lists of 2023. Of no surprise, Depeche Mode's Memento Mori has landed on almost every single one, if not every single one, of these of these lists. So let's start here. This is the latest information that I can find, none of it official, as it relates to the potential release dates for not only the album, but also the single. Uh, Quietus, which is an online music publication, a couple of weeks back, uh, back put out that March 17th would be the official release date for Memento Mori. Now, that is still speculation. A lot of different outlets began to run um, with that particular news item as it being official. Somebody even went so far as to dummy up what was intended to be um, an official screen grab from, uh, I believe, Columbia's website. Um, but it was clearly something that a fan had, had made and nothing, um, nothing official. Uh, I believe the Quietus is pulling this particular date out because it would match the release date of Spirit. But so far, we haven't had anything official. I'm a little hesitant to believe that March 17th would be the release date, simply because it's so close to the to the start of the tour. That being said, Dave Gone did say it would be late March when the album would come out. So I think we're getting a March release date. I'm just a little reluctant to believe it would be that far mid-March um, and that close to the start of the tour. Now, that being said... Things have changed quite a bit. Typically, I think you would have a bit of a lead-in between an album release and a tour because it matters in terms of ticket sales. Depeche Mode has, has grown well beyond that at this point in time, to which they could release the album right before the start of the tour, and most of the tickets would already be sold, so it wouldn't matter. Um, there's also uh, Twitter speculation of the single whatever track it might be, whether it's the rumored ghosts again or something else, could arrive in mid or early February. Now, again, Where's the Revolution was released February 3rd of that year. Museo uh, Depeche Mode, at Museo Mode, M-U-S-E-O Mode on Twitter, uh, tweeted out this earlier in the week. I know from certain sources that their best single will be released in a month and will announce the new album, Memento Mori. Now, where they're getting their information from, who knows? They were responding to uh, a, uh, a DJ, I believe, or a radio show that was going to be spinning best singles from other bands. So they replied to that tweet with the, I know from certain sources that their best single will be released in a month and will announce a new uh, the new album, Memento Mori. In... Years past, 
if you go digging enough this close to the release of a Depeche Mode album, typically you can find information on it. Um, now, the last time that I can recall getting any sort of um, significant amount of leaks from the band would have to go back to 2008 and Sounds of the Universe. Um, and at that moment in time, there were many more websites that were that had message boards that were incredibly active as it related to Depeche Mode. That has died down quite a bit over the course of the last, um, you, know, you know, ten years or so. Um, there are very few websites that are running um, message boards for the band anymore, and certainly ones that are active. The one that I typically go to is Depeche-Mode.com. That is not where I would typically go and get leaked information about a new release from the band. Usually it would be from other foreign websites, which I would have to run through Google Translation to find out. But And I remember when Sounds of the Universe came out, we had quite a few leaks from, from that album. Um, specifically, the demos came out. Times have changed, though, and the way that bands create this music, uh, who they work with, how they work with labels, I think it's less likely that we get the type of leaks that we've received in the past. Usually it would be when the album would go to print... Right When it would go to be pressed, whether it was vinyl or tapes or then CDs, you would end up getting released uh, audio from that based off the fact that people would have them in their hands in distribution centers or where the album was being created and pressed to be released. That happens um, you know, on a much smaller scale now in the world of, of digital, and I think it's less likely that this type of stuff gets leaked like, like it did in the past. However, I'm doing my best to look out to see if uh, anything from Memento Mori ends up coming out prior to, uh, to its release. And if it does, I'll be uh, certain to, uh, to share that with you here on the, on the show. And I don't feel bad about that because I know that you're still going to go and purchase the album or you already subscribe to a service in which you're going to be able to get the album and you've paid money up front for it. So um, having anything Depeche Mode um, related be leaked out prior to the album, um, to me, it's a much different ball game than going and downloading a, a movie that's out in theaters that you're not going to go and spend money on because you're going to watch it on your laptop, uh, and, and therefore they lose out on money. I'm confident that almost every single person listening to this, that you will still be going and purchasing your fair share of, of uh, Depeche Mode, and the band won't be losing any, uh, any money if anything does, uh, does, get, does get leaked. I am just dying to hear this um, this album. Uh, I've, I don't think I've anticipated a Depeche Mode album uh, with this kind of excitement in a very long, long time. And again, a lot of that comes down to um, very specific reasons for me, uh, for me personally. So, uh, as always, if you want to comment on the show, and I would love to hear what you're doing in terms of Depeche Mode at the moment in the run-up to the release of this album, talkshownerd at gmail.com, or leave a comment up on YouTube. I've been wiping out on Depeche Mode lately, and as I've mentioned on previous shows, and I'll get into this with listener feedback this week, going back and listening to albums that didn't really grab me all that much in anticipation of Memento Mori, and suddenly I find myself enjoying them much more than I ever did at their initial release date. This morning, as I was going about my business and working on TikTok videos and book stuff and show stuff, I put on um, Delta Machine in the background and just found myself swept up in that album in a way that I had not been in a long, long time. Specifically, Heaven struck me in a way that it didn't before. I was not a fan of that single um, when it was released as being the lead single from Delta Machine or when the album came out. I just I felt it was rather drab and uninteresting. And listening to Heaven this morning, I that was probably the most that I ever enjoyed that song. Um uh, was listening to it today and 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 there's a there's a listener feedback that that alludes to this that I kind of agree with that I'll share with uh, with you here in um in just a moment. All right, I want to get to something fun. This was um this was something that I actually did on the ep- on the Lost Christmas episode. Uh but I'll go ahead and uh and repeat it here since you didn't get a chance to hear it the uh, the first time. So one famous among the fans who follow Depeche Mode online, whether it's the the Depeche Dash Mode Halo Forum or on Twitter, uh, Peter Two, uh, Peter T O O, 
uh, has been a, a Depeche Mode fan. Never met Peter. Um, read his posts for years now. Follow him on uh, on Twitter. Uh, and again, among the fans, he's very well known for those of us that follow this stuff on online. So prior to the holidays, um, <laughs> I caught this on the forum, and I just thought it was funny. And I wanted to share it on the show. I shared it on the Christmas episode because it kind of comes off as a Christmas story, but I'll go ahead and do it here um, just for fun. So on the forum, Peter 2 had posted, so I was playing around with OpenAI, and for a laugh, I asked it to write a story about Depeche Mode in the style of Douglas Adams of Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy fame. I was incredibly interested to read this because of my love for Depeche Mode and the fact that I'm also an author that has written a science fiction series. The first book in that series, while it was written because of my love of Star Wars and George Lucas and James Cameron, um, Depeche Mode is has, is soaked into, is baked into that story. The, the lead character is a Depeche Mode fan set in the future here on Earth, largely in large part based off of me. Um, I use direct and indirect Depeche Mode um, references throughout throughout the story. So um, I'm going to read to you the Depeche Mode story in the style of Douglas Adams that Peter Two put together using OpenAI. Despite the many dangers and challenges they faced on their intergalactic adventures, Depeche Mode and their alien friends still found time to have fun and enjoy each other's company. One memorable moment occurred when Martin, excuse me, when Marvin, the paranoid android, and Martin Gore from Depeche Mode decided to go out for a tuna fish sandwich. Marvin was feeling particularly low and depressed, and Martin thought that a sandwich might cheer him up. They went to a nearby cafe and ordered their sandwiches, but when they arrived, they were horrified to discover that the cafe was out of tuna fish. Marvin was devastated and he began to sob uncontrollably. Why does everything always go wrong for me? He wailed. Why can't I ever have a simple tuna fish sandwich like a normal being? Martin tried to comfort Marvin, but he was laughing so hard that he could barely speak. Come on, Marvin. It's not that big of a deal, he said between giggles. We can just order something else. But Marvin was inconsolable, and he refused to eat anything else. In the end, Martin had to go back to the kitchen and make Marvin a tuna fish sandwich himself using canned tuna and some bread that he found in the pantry. Marvin was overjoyed when he finally got his sandwich and he ate it with gusto and Martin couldn't stop laughing at the absurdity of the situation. A few days later, Ford Perfect and Dave Gone from Depeche Mode decided to go out for a pint at their favorite pub in London. They were enjoying a, qu a quiet drink and catching up on each other's lives when they ran into Alan Wilder, who used to be a member of Depeche Mode but had left the band several years ago. Alan was excited to see his old friends, and he asked them how things were going with the band. Ford and Dave told him about their recent adventures in the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, and Alan was fascinated. That sounds amazing, he said. I've been thinking about rejoining the band do you think there's still a place for me ford and dave looked at each other unsure of what to say they were happy with the current lineup of depeche mode and they didn't want to upset the balance by bringing alan back into the mix but they also didn't want to hurt alan's feelings and they knew that he was a talented musician who had contributed a lot to the band in the past after a moment of hesitation they decided to invite Alan to join them for a jam session and see how it went. The jam session was a huge success, and Depeche Mode and Alan quickly regained their old chemistry and spark. In the end, they decided to welcome Alan back into the band, and they embarked on a new chapter of their musical journey together. Depeche Mode continued to thrive with Alan Wilder back in the band, and they embarked on a new tour that took them to different parts of the galaxy. They played to packed stadiums and were greeted with wild enthusiasm wherever they went. Peter wrapped up his post and said, stupid, I know. <laughs> I don't know, man. I'm worried about AI. <laughs> I was thoroughly entertained the first time that I read that story. I don't know. I, you, know you can never account for the human element, right? 
But that to me was just that just that that just cracked me up. So I really hope you enjoyed listening to that as much as I I enjoyed uh, narrating it. And thank you, Peter, too, for sharing that. If you happen to be uh, listening to this particular podcast. All right, let's get into some listener feedback. And I've been holding on to this stuff for a long, long time. So my apologies to those who wrote to me last year. And I only now have gotten to your emails. Um, from Yunani189, I'm probably saying that wrong, but that is your YouTube handle as I phonetically try to pronounce it. I completely agree with you with what you said about Sounds of the Universe. I had a similar comment about Sounds of the Universe on a previous podcast about how I re-listened to that recently and, again, just was struck by how much I enjoyed it. I felt completely disappointed at the time, but seven years later, I was hooked and listened to it a lot, much more than playing The Angel, which I loved at the time. So weird. Also, their latest albums are slower and have less single material, so you need to listen to these albums many more times to get them and leave your pre- your prejudices about what DM should be behind. I enjoyed Exciter a lot at the time. Then I had internet and saw the reception. Fans sometimes are too negative and can't appreciate anything past 1993. It's a bit sad. I'm younger and listen to their albums with an open mind, and I was happy not to have the experience tainted by negativity. And I've talked about this before, and thank you for the uh, for the email. I've talked about this before, and the fact that um, I know that the way that I listen to albums, and you know, more specifically Depeche Mode albums, has changed quite a bit since I was a lot younger. Now, whether that's because the quality of of the music has changed, or whether it's just the way that I soak in the music has has changed, um, but those albums going back to the late 80s and into the 90s at the at the height of when I was into the band and following them on tour uh, I just know that there was this desire that I had to 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 listen to grab as much as I can and just enjoy all of it and I become a little bit more selective in my later years to the music and I think it's when I go and listen to the albums now with a more open mind as I'm anticipating new music that I'm able to as the um, comment, as the email said, I'm able to kind of drop any prejudices I might have had and just let the music wash over me. Um, and then I end up enjoying it more, if that makes any sense whatsoever. All right. A friend of the show, um, Stephanie from Germany writes, um, I was at the Marcus Kavka's former MTV presenter reading in a small club in Hamburg. He talks about his life and how the band accompanied him and influenced him. It was just wonderful, a wonderfully quirky, and it brought back, uh, brought back fond memories. I also had a chance to chat with him. I'm a happy guy, but with Depeche Mode, I embrace my dark side, he said. I felt immediately addressed. I know exactly what he means. It was also a bit funny. I'm only 40, and most are actually between 50 and 60, but as I mentioned, everyone is welcome. As for the tribute album... I can only say that I hardly dare to listen because apart from Personal Jesus by Johnny Cash, I think cover versions are blasphemy. Did you hear that the strings will be arranged on the new album? I read it and wasn't sure if I should like it. We'll have to be surprised. So that's it uh, from my side for now. I wish you a wonderful Christmas time and good uh, good health. Again, thank you, Stephanie. Always uh, great to hear from you. And again, my apologies for reading this uh, so late. Um, I have the same kind of attitude as it relates to the cover versions of Depeche Mode songs. Um, Some of them are okay, but um, I don't gravitate towards them by any stretch. I like to just go to the actual Depeche Mode music. As far as strings being arranged on the album, yeah, I heard that rumor pop up. I couldn't go. I was trying to go and find out where it came from, but I couldn't. Uh, I couldn't seem to. Um, I couldn't seem to to, to locate it. Um, I'm fine with that. I remember what a huge deal it was when um, Songs of Faith and Devotion came out, and we had one caress, which was entirely strings, which just seemed so foreign to me as a Depeche Mode fan that there was nothing electronic happening in a Depeche Mode um, song, apart from acoustic versions that we heard before, but on an official album. Um, And I absolutely adore uh, that song, as I do that album as well. So uh, listening back to um, the snippets from the press conference, again, I just get so excited to hear what the band um, has in store in this album. I really do think we're going to get something truly special.
so I played that for a reason. One, because I was talking about the new album. But two, and I don't know why this happens. I believe that everything happens for a reason. I truly do. It's one of the core uh, themes that runs throughout my science fiction uh, stories in my Embark series, which I'll talk about here in just a moment. But for some reason, when I'm recording a podcast, after I wrap up and I go to some of the websites that I typically go and look at to get information, something big drops. So this time I decided, as I was getting towards the end of this episode, because I record these as they're live. I do no editing of these shows, by the way. Um, because I'm a uh, full-time radio talk show host, I just find that I'm my best work is done when it's when it's live because that's what I do for a living. When I start chopping things up, I just don't like the way that it sounds. So even if I make mistakes, which I do quite often, it just ends up being on the live recording. Anyway, I went to Depeche Dash mode while I was playing that those snippets from Memento Mori, and sure enough, this is pretty big news. So, um, ASCAP. Right. This is the official the official music uh, foundation. Right. The ASCAP Foundation. They're in charge of putting the You know, the music out of artists these days. I'm looking on the official ASCAP website. Somebody had shared this. This was shared by uh, Shamiti on the uh, Depeche Dash Mode forum. Uh, then it's a link. It is a link to uh, what looks like. Um, a new song to be released to publishers. And so it has official information. you got a work ID and a number on here. There is a track called Before We Drown. On the ASCAP website, it says the writers are uh, Dave Gaughan, Peter Gordino, and Christian uh, Eigner. Performers are Depeche Mode. I'm not seeing anything here as it relates to a release date, um, I see some information on here about it not being assigned to a particular sp- uh, place, but it says the publishers are Res- uh, Reservoir, Reverb Music Limited. Um, I'm clicking on this link right now on ASCAP, trying to see if I can get any further information on this. Um, not at th- no, that doesn't take me anywhere. I'm just kind of clicking on this as I'm as I'm working through here. Um. So, I mean, this looks like um, this looks like something official on ASCAP as they work towards getting a song released. So, the only speculation I can have on this is that this could be. It says performers in Depeche Mode. The song is "Before We Drown." So, perhaps this could be the lead single as they are preparing to um, release it. Perhaps this could just be a portion of Memento Mori. Somebody suggested online. Um, Schmidt's post says these songs were listed in one of those databases with performer with composers and performers. Uh, and they asked, is, is this a Dave solo song that we totally missed? Um, Gabrielle Marquez, uh, who I've had some contact with in the past, uh, posted, I also found cover me, cover me lights by Dave, Peter and Christian on the ASCAP database. Might be cover me, but not sure. So uh, this could be pointing towards, you know, the first official title that we have from the album. Uh, And I think the biggest takeaway from that is the fact that it actually says performers are Depeche Mode. So there you go. A little bit of breaking news that I wish that I could share um, more uh, details about. Apart from the fact that this is all official coming from uh, from uh, from Ask. I just did a quick Google search uh, for Before We Drown and Depeche Mode, and nothing came up. There is a song that was released uh, by an artist. It looks like, um, uh, who wrote this? Stella Explorer, 2019. Uh, so again, uh, we'll uh, I'll keep you posted. If I get more information um, on, um, on this, I'll certainly uh, share it with you. But again, this could be pointing towards our first bit of information and first uh, song title, maybe even the first single. All right, that wraps up uh, the, uh, the show this week. Before I uh, cut you loose, uh, just a couple of things. First off, um, I probably have mentioned this on the show, bu- on the show before, but um, this album, um, from the title to what happened with the band, I think it's safe to say that for you listening, this album's going to carry special meaning, especially with the loss of, uh, of Andrew Fletcher. Uh, and the band continuing to go and release the album. The album title in and of itself, um, Remember You Must Die, 
Uh, it all takes on more significance for me because of the loss of my best friend, uh, Drew Lee, in on June 25th of, uh, of last year. Of course, this came right on the heels of the passing of Andrew Fletcher. Am um, I having to continue on without him and doing my full-time radio uh, radio show? Um, this album already is carrying a very, very special place in my heart, even though I haven't uh, I haven't heard it yet. Uh, and again, it's just because of the similarities of what this band has has gone through. And even in years past, um, you know, Depeche Mode's music is ambiguous. We all take what we want from it. Um, we take from the lyrics what we want, and we kind of make them our own. When you look at what's happened with the band and Alan Wilder leaving for me personally, there was a time when I was working with my best friend, Drew, and uh, after three years and putting together a number one show, he left um, where I was working in Tucson, Arizona, and came to here to Minneapolis. And we, you know, we were apart, and I had to go on and do the show by myself in Tucson for um, another six years uh, to a lot of success until we were able to reunite again. Um, and then subsequently, his um, his uh, sudden passing in June of last year. So. Uh, I am uh, eager to hear this album and uh, can't wait to see what type of emotional connections I end up making with it, um, much like I'm sure uh, you are uh, You are as well. All right. If, it's, if this is uh, one of the first times you've uh, listened to My Nerd World and Depeche Mode, the podcast, thank you so much for checking the show out. Um, I'm a full-time radio talk show host here in Minneapolis. I'm also uh, an author. Um, I love science fiction. I love Star Wars. Um, as of late, big Avatar fan and James Cameron, and uh, I've um, written a science fiction space opera series. Uh, so if you love Depeche Mode and you also read and love science fiction, I hope uh, that you will treat yourself or if you know a, a friend or a family member um, with sci-fi. Uh, it's set in the future where air and space flight culture has replaced car culture. And again, it's inspired in part by Depeche Mode, life in the so-called space age, the world we live in and life in general. Depeche Mode, as I mentioned, plays a part in the underlying themes of the story, and the main character himself is a massive Depeche Mode fan at a time when the music of the 80s through the 2000s is nostalgic and popular among the characters of the story. The story uh, features references to Depeche Mode, both direct and indirect, while telling an exciting and emotional space opera saga. Uh, the description for book one Katha's father died one year ago. Yesterday, he gave her the key to saving humanity. She just doesn't know it yet. The stars are within reach as rival mega corporations, D-Corp and Entercon, have made interstellar travel possible and space flight available to the masses. But when an industrial accident inside D-Corp sets off an apocalyptic chain of events, all of Earth is at risk. Meanwhile, Katha Morrow receives a cryptic message from her late aerospace engineer father, leading her and fellow pilot Taft Guardia to a shocking discovery. But excitement turns to fear as the global evacua evacuation begins and Katha realizes the significance of what they found. While the ruthless Sin Argum of D-Corp attempts to exploit the disaster, it's up to Katha, Taft, and a ragtag squadron of pilots to save Earth's evacuees from the tyranny of of D Corp's evil leader. If you like your science fiction to have some romance filled with action as well, then Embark is perfect for you. It is written for adults, but it's great for ages 11 and older. You can pick up Embark Book One today in ebook for just 99 cents. You can get the opening trilogy in the seven book series at a discounted price as well in ebook. It's also available in hardcover, paperback, and audiobook on Amazon.com. Search for Embark John J O N Justice on Amazon or head on over to MyNerdWorld.net. Again, thank you uh, so much for checking out uh, this week's uh, episode. I'm looking forward to many episodes in the future as we head towards the release of Memento Mori. Make sure you subscribe to the show wherever you listen to the show, whatever podcasting platform you do. Also, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Like and subscribe on YouTube. If ever there is breaking news and I get more information about this potential Before We Drown song that I mentioned earlier, I will immediately put up a podcast and post something up. So be sure you follow... My Nerd World and Depeche Mode, the podcast. You can email me, talkshownerd at gmail.com. And again, head on over to mynerdworld.net. I hope wherever you are, you are happy, you are healthy, you are safe. And I look forward to hearing from you. And what are you doing in the run-up to Depeche Mode's next album? 
Talk to you again really soon. Bye.